<laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is Cricket Lap for Monday, December 12th. And this is the Healthy Lifestyle slash Raw Food Potluck group. And um, Jean, um, what? Uh, okay, so we start at the beginning of the book. They don't know what you're talking about, Jean. Okay, I have a book that is uh, published by Hallelujah Diet. And it's just uh, inf it's just uh, information for just to peek at the. Can you hear her? Okay. To, to peek okay. our uh, conversation tonight. What we want to do is allow people to share what helps them in their search for a healthy lifestyle. Hi there. How are you doing? <laughs> and so, uh, and so. Uh, and I'd like each person to be able to say about how long they think they've been thinking about it. And, uh, you know, and uh, maybe you've been thinking about it for quite a long time or maybe just a short time. And maybe you want to say something about well, what drew you to that particular living, uh, that foods, uh, that plan, <laughs> the living food plan. And uh, and maybe uh, and we know also as we speak that Hiawatha Cromer is in the rehab center, and they're keeping her quite busy on therapies. Because when I went there the day after she was moved over there, they started her right away. She was so tired she could hardly keep her eyes open at about six o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> And there was somebody there that said she was coming every day, uh, or every day that she could. And I think that's like two or three times a week to massage her feet, massage her body and uh, help help uh, the circulation and uh, that she can relax. And so evidently, whatever they did, they put her through the pages of therapy because they are planning on her not staying there. They're planning on her to get better. So I think we can too. And um, so this particular magazine is put out by Halia uh, Diet. And it's not as much about the diet as it is about the lifestyle because it mentions everything uh, that you might want to talk about. And I don't think we can on uh, everything, but there are like different uh, different pages that say, uh, okay, if you want to know why, if I if I ask the question, why is a raw food better than cooked food? What would you say? What would you say is the most important thing to remember about that? Because I mean, is it why? better than cooked food? <laughs> and why? And why? <laughs> For what reason? Because it heals us and it has its live enzymes to do what it needs to do instead of killing it. Right. And what what kills the uh, food value? The heat. It's, uh, heat and time. Somebody yes. says you forget how long since you picked that vegetable or that fruit before you prepare it. And that's time for it to uh, spoil if they it, or even it might make a difference on how long your food lasts after you make it. The fresher it is, the better. Right. Yes. That's because of those nutrients come from where? How are the, how what causes them to be in the vegetables and the fruits? From the soil and the sun. The sun, definitely a really big thing, a really big player in that. And then you've got your your minerals in the soil. Soil. And you've got your good and your bad bacteria out there, especially the good bacteria mm -hmm. that could be found in your food. So you don't have to worry about wash. One thing I learned learned from somebody is you don't have to have your food perfectly clean from the soil if you bring it out of your garden, because there are very beneficial bacteria that are in the soil. And so cool. anyway, it's not you need to clean it because there might have been other animals around. But other than that. Uh, yeah, don't eat the dirt from your garden because you want to grow in there next year. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so here it is. What is toxic food? Now, there's some food that may act kind of toxic. We have, I think it's about the 
one, two, third page on the inside, it mentions some toxic uh, mm. food in this. And uh, what jumps out at you right now? What did you, was there anything here that you found uh, helped you to be more healthy by leaving it out? That's my question here. So um, for the first question they were asking is, there are two reasons why cells malfunction. I never really heard this, but uh, actually uh, they are not getting enough of what they need to function properly. And the second reason is that they are being exposed to something that is interfering with their normal function. So, um, so either they're exposed or just not getting enough, uh, uh, enough to make them function properly. So uh, enough of something, you mentioned the sun, that's important. Uh, also, there's nutrients in the soil. Also, uh, the fact that it's not cooked and how you have prepared it. What, what, there is another page in here. I'm just gonna do it fast. It has, we should say what's happening. So I don't wanna push, go around because it's hard to find all your, uh, your pages. If I were to ask you on the page, the next page, it talks about sugar, okay? Mm -hmm. So would you say that that's something that was something that you had to do something about your diet as far as sugar is concerned? Mm -hmm. And what did you do? Just cut Remo down. I still eat a little bit of it, but I just cut down. Yeah, removed it just about done. Yeah, Speaking not having it. Not having it? Yeah. Did you, did you substitute something for it? Um, mostly monk fruit or honey, but most of the time I literally just, if I need to sprinkle a little bit, great, but otherwise, no. I'm literally just doing fruit and juice itself, the fruit itself to be the nutrient part instead of having a sweetener, using pineapple or using bananas as the sweetener or applesauce. Yeah. Does anybody else want you? Do you want to say anything more about that, or do you have feel something to say? Share, feel free to share, the group to share. <laughs> yeah. I thought somebody might have something to say. <laughs> well, I mostly cut out sugar. Um, I just don't have those kind of treats anymore. I mean, I might make a raw food fruit dish like this. Um, these pina colada balls that we had tonight. There's just pineapple and coconut and raisins in that and no other kind of sweetener, no honey, no dates, anything like that. A little bit of raisins, but um, not very many. So, uh, And there was another salad in there, too, with cabbage and uh, I think pineapple in it, right? Yeah. There? Yeah, that was good. Was that yours, um, Janice? Coleslaw with pineapple? No, that was... a. Uh... Yellow pepper. That wasn't oh, yellow pepper. It wasn't pineapple. Oh. You put yellow. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> <Now>. Wow. <laughs> How did you do that? That was amazing. <laughs> well, I put peppers on sale, three for whatever. Yeah. So one of them was yellow. That's how well, I did it. Very well. So, so they're mentioned here. Sugar evidently suppresses your immune system, making you more vulnerable to d disease. And another statement they're making is sugar interferes with the body's absorption of calcium and magnesium, especially refined sugar, which is your white, white sugar, rapidly converted in the blood to fat. And so um, promoting obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. Or they have like soda. There's another source of sugar that some, some people like to. Fructose, it's actually a can of soda does the same thing to the body as a can of beer. Fructose is alcohol without the stupor. So, which I never thought of that before. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, sugar can cause arthritis. As another one is on this page, it's a page that says the bitter truth. That's kind of uh, witty, isn't it? The bitter truth. <laughs> Uh, sugar has no vitamins, minerals, or fiber. 
Sugar can cause learning disorders in school children. Sugar may lead to cancer of the breast, ovaries, prostate, and rectum. And here's a success story, which is nice to have. Well, there's some alternatives. Let's just see what we got here. Did we cover some of these? Um, uh, though most people consider refined sugar harmless, it is a root cause of hypoglycemia, high cholesterol, indigestion, myopia, sabora dermatitis, gout. I know that because I went the wrong way in my diet. I started getting gout pain. I want to tell you, it was terrible. I'm never going back there again. Hyperactivity, lack of concentration, depression, and anxiety. Furthermore, since refined uh, sugar is rapidly converted in the blood to fat, or triglycerides, it promotes obesity, the risk of heart disease, and diabetes. And when ingested, sugar produces an overacid condition. This forces the body to regulate its acid alkaline balance by stripping alkaline minerals, mainly calcium, from the bones and teeth, causing dental decay and osteoporosis. So then it says, be careful about sweeteners. As health damaging as sugar is, artificial sweeteners like aspartame, saccharin, the sweet and low, the equal, the sucralose, and Splenda have their own set of health deteriorating dangers, uh, while some are known to cause cancer. The long-term effects of others are still unknown. And I think there's a lot of things that are unknown still coming out. Uh, they have different ways of treating uh, Stevia now too, they're making ethyl from it. I'm not sure about what they do to change it. Why change something really good? <laughs> anyway, success story. Okay, here we go, success story. I was addicted to sugar and ice cream and drank a liter bottle of Diet Cola each day. I, I developed headaches, foggy thinking, painful joints, esophageal spa, uh, spasms, heart palpitations, and itchy dry skin. Unbelievably, I never connected my symptoms to my diet. And after adopting the Hallelujah diet, which is going to be what? And we, we're just checking it out. It's, it's, it's making food your medicine. And also uh, it's making vegetables and fruits and seeds and nuts your main your main uh, food. Okay, and making it natural, bring uh, into your body. But anyway, it says here, uh, unbelievably, unbelievably, I didn't know about this connection and that those physical problems have disappeared though. And as I approach my 57th birthday, I feel better than I did in my 30s and maybe even in my 20s. Wow. Now. I think that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was 30, I couldn't digest the meat. I knew I couldn't. Mm -hmm. It kind of sat in my stomach and it didn't wow. go anywhere. And I took, uh, I took hydrochloric acid. I mean, oh. in a pill, in a pill. Wow. Yeah, and I also tried taking papaya to help with the digestion. Even in my 30s, I knew I had a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing I read about that is that that kind of thing, uh, you can tell that maybe you might have a problem with diabetes later, later on, because you're first of all, liver and the pancreas, they uh, they uh, are in charge of di you know your digestion process and a lot in your all your intestinal tract, everything. There's some something, everything has a, a purpose and that's created for you to be part of that process of uh, assimilating the food that you're eating. Um, so then the question is, what should I eat? And we have heard Cricket talk about, so she does this uh, uh, wonderful talk on what, why would you eat plant-based foods? So uh, what are you trying when you, when you give that talk, what do you try? Uh, what would you think she would try to say? And I was going to ask her if she wanted to say something about it. Because she uh, has given that talk a couple of times to our group. And we would appreciate that. 
So uh, maybe we should show if we know, <laughs> if we learned <laughs> well enough. Uh, so what would you say? And there's a few things on this uh, paper here that talks about, did anybody see anything they wanna mention about why should we like, have our diet reflect uh, some of this learning we're doing or why should we? Where are you? Well, I'm just looking, I, I saw sugar here. Then you turn the page now and it said, what should I eat? So it says plant-based diets, the complete package. So, uh, and, and then it talked about animal protein. What could you say about animal protein? It's some um, secondhand protein. Okay. And um, the animal, the animal ate, well, carnivores eat, um, <clears throat> other animals, but like cows, pigs, chickens, they all eat plant-based foods mm -hmm. to make their muscles, which is what we eat is their muscles. And so if we, if we want firsthand protein, we should eat the same thing they eat, plants, oh. greens. and I love it. Well, he's <laughs> <a> 500 <laughs> pound gorilla. I love it. He eats berries and greens and leaves and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't eat animals. And would you want to tangle with a 500-pound gorilla? Uh -uh. No. Elephants. <laughs> yeah, look at the size of elements. And they eat plant-based. So, and a couple a page before that, um, there's a, a picture about... Um, the difference between carnivores and omnivores. So um, the carnivore teeth, the oh yeah, the people teeth, the jaws, the digest digestive tract. Um, carnivores eat up to 25% of their weight at a time. I never um, heard that in all my comparisons of carnivores versus herbivores. You cannot eat a 40 pound steak. <laughs> so 25% of your weight, if you weigh 160 pounds, you can't eat a 40 pound steak. No. So you're not a carnivore. Right. <laughs> um, and there's lots of nice little recipes scattered throughout this book, too. Um, there's ha Hawaii Hallelujah Blue Salad which is spinach, bell pepper, blueberries, romaine, carrots, walnuts, um, blueberry vinaigrette to put on it. Um, here's just, this is a really nice little booklet. I like the page that says, remove these from your diet, replace with raw foods or replace with cooked foods. So maybe you have, um, lard, margarine, shortening, anything containing hydrogenated oils or trans fats. If you replace it with raw foods, that'd be like extra virgin olive oil, um, avocados. Um, but the cooked food choice would be vegan mayonnaise made from cold pressed oil. So it gives you some options. Um, if you don't want to go all the way to raw or don't want to be um, that, you know, you want to have some options. Here's the cooked food option that's healthier than, let's say, beef, pork, fish, chicken, eggs, turkey, hamburgers, hot dogs, bleh, bacon, sausage, bologna. <laughs> so the cooked version of that is cooked beans, mushrooms, cooked vegetables, um, or the raw version of that is sprouted beans. I have never found a sprouted bean that I like. <laughs> um, chia seeds, hemp seeds. Um, I'll put a, like a tablespoon of hemp seeds in my smoothie in the yeah, morning. Those are really yeah, nice. a nice um, protein booster. So yeah, this is a nice little magazine. So I, I like I like hemp seeds, just uh, sprinkling them on my uh, on sprouts and. I began to make uh, alfalfa sprouts, which is the first sprout that I really felt really successful at being able to make my own sprouts at home. And I do that regularly, and I try to keep three 
like three quart jars. I'll start with three quart jars with a couple of tablespoons of alfalfa sprouts. Soak those. But I like I have nylon stockings that I don't want anymore. I put that with a rubber band around the top of those. And then morning and night, I'll put them under the cold faucet and I will rinse them all week long. And then finally, by the end of the week, then you've got some little uh, tails coming out from those and they'll turn into little leaves at the end and that's green. And just put that out in the sun for a little bit and they turn bright green and then they're ready to eat. So it's kind of a, you think, oh, seven days. It's, it's kind of interesting that you get your product in seven days and then you can keep them in the refrigerator. I have a couple, uh, my husband eats yogurt. So I take those yogurt containers and I'll put them in there and, and, uh, and keep them in the refrigerator after there. And then I'll take them out and rinse them. You gotta rinse them and keep them fresh uh, and get the seeds, let the seeds come off. The seeds will eventually come off, but you can eat them and they don't hurt you. It doesn't, it doesn't, I haven't even noticed them up there in there. Um, same thing with mung beans too, I think you can, I, That that's the one that I, I like to have the seed casings come off, but like when you start experimenting with seeds and, and you see what you can do to uh, spice up your life, so to speak, uh, it's really wonderful. When you think about, this is one of the statistics, there's more vitamin C in the sprouts of an, a handful of alfalfa than there is in an orange, vitamin C. Wow. So, uh, so the vitamin C is in those sprouts, mm -hmm. and also if you think about doesn't that, taste as good though. Yeah, you know me, got to be practical, right? <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> I said I, they don't taste as good as oranges, though. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I, I like those little. <laughs> the tiny ones now. Uh, oh yeah, the little tangerines. Yeah. And uh, so, well, what kind of day would you have? Now, this is an interesting day. I don't know if we can look at this. Hallelujah! That right in the middle, in the uh, middle crease of the magazine, it tells you. It says the Hallelujah Diet concept. So you're looking like this: make the diet fit your life, not the other way around. Okay. So you've got to do something that helps you live your life and keep whatever plan that you choose you're gonna do to help you do it. So this is some ideas as you go throughout your day of what you might do. Where would you think you'd use, now there's, it's not just eating, is it, huh? No. Uh, we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna ask you right after we look at this, what other things help you with your lifestyle? Because just changing your food is probably not all you need to do. To Exercise. Help out. Exercise. Exercising. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you've got to get it out, go ahead. Say it right now. It's <laughs> exercising. <laughs> and uh, and also, uh, also, do you, do you have to sleep? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why is sleep so important? That's when you heal. Yeah. yeah. That's when your body assimilates. Yeah. A lot it of repairs oil. all the tissue. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's when it does its work. How many people, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but how many people have trouble waking up at night? A lot of people. I think it's pretty common as yeah. people get older hmm. too. You know, I don't know. But what what is and also if you've got an idea about what helps you. To sleep more soundly, I'd like to hear it. That would be great. Well, it's the Young Living essential oil supplements I take. That taking um, put the melatonin into the system, and I sleep really hard then, or do the raindrops. So that helps the cycle of not um, waking up in the middle of the night constantly. We used to, but we don't anymore. So what do you do? What do you do? Well, I'll either take Cortostop or I'll take Sleep Essence or I'll take Root of Allah or do a raindrop. If I've really uh, been around people that have been sick around me, they'll help keep my immune system up. 
And that's what I take regularly every night, rotate. And that way I can keep the, the melatonin system in there so that it, I can have a deep REM sleep and then I feel refreshed every day when I wake up to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I accidentally did one time? I had a cup of uh, barley max before going to bed. And what happened? I slept more soundly and I woke up Wow. refreshed wow. And, wow. refreshed and when i i drank a, a cup of barley max before mm -hmm. going to bed at night i think any green drink or any like maybe even carrot juice mm -hmm. uh can uh you know i think the juices are a super food okay i mean just think of it a, a cell a plant cell uh and and all the liquid that's in the cell inside the fiber when you make the juice, you break it that open and you strain it and uh, you get pure nutrition. Mm. How many people use uh, juices? They try to juice, has anybody done that? I, I do. juice it myself, I not buy it from the store. <laughs> yeah, I, I do some uh, Ningxia Red sometimes. Yeah. But I've just found the last three nights, I've been trying very hard not to eat anything after dinner. Yes. And I have been sleeping so much better. Oh. I used to snack half the night. <laughs> In fact, sometimes I'd eat more after dinner than I did at dinner. Wow. It, it just got to be a habit. You know, my stomach would go, oh, you're watching TV. It's time to get something to eat. Oh. Okay. And um, now that I've broken that habit to a certain extent, um, last night I had like just four or five nuts. Because I was starting, my stomach was starting to growl. Um, but um, not eating after dinner has really made a big difference in how much I, how easily I sleep. And I do the things Deborah talked about, sleep essence and peace and calming and that kind of thing. So I also do um, breathing exercises that helps me. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I told what, you that. Uh, what's your breathing exercise you like well, to do? A couple of different ones, but one I've been doing lately is... Um, Inhale slowly five, count of five, hold for five, count of five, slowly exhale, count of five, hold, count of five, and then continue that. Yeah. yeah. That's what Hiawatha calls square breathing. Square breathing. Yeah. yeah. It's square. It's because it's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Yeah. Okay. Inhale, hold, exhale, exhale hold. hold. So inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do two count five. I don't know what it is. Well, now that's, that's, that's whatever's comfortable. That's what's good. It's I do that while I'm walking out in the fresh, cold air sometimes. I'll do the breathing in and out so I can just focus on the rhythm of the breathing while I'm doing it, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something you can do any time of day. I also find that if I do a lot of work outside in the yard all day, when I come in, I sleep really yeah. well. Nice <laughs> yeah. <go>. Fresh air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, so, and they, they're saying, um, they're, they're suggesting, you know, some of your juices, that's a good thing to do in the mid-afternoon, mid-morning. Uh, or like, I like to make sure I get some flaxseed every day. So I'd have a certain time. I have that with some juice and uh, have it. And uh, so, and I think it's good to keep a, a log <clears throat> too of what you're doing. Oh, uh oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, is that, it's I have to go mine. turn it off. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Huh? It's Jean's phone. Oh, I was gonna say I have no idea what that is or where it's coming from. Okay. I'm gonna use this as an opportunity. My sister has been doing hi there. Uh we we are in the middle of a meeting about how we're changing our lifestyle to be more healthy. And you call, and I remember that you have done some things to become more healthy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is my sister Melody. Can you oh. <laughs> hi, 
And so what do you think of right off the bat? Anything that, that you did that made a difference, yeah, in your health? One of the main things was I changed the way I was thinking. Mm. There you go. That's wonderful. And he, mm. he speaks all over there in Missouri. That's wow. cool. Very cool. So there you go now. So what, what do we do? We tell people uh, the things that help us. And, and we have uh, some uh, master teachers and, and even a cricket here who is sitting here is uh, someone who did some things about it too to try to spread the word. Uh, and, and she's sitting right next to her uh, her mother-in-law and uh, and right here in this room. And uh, so I don't know, how many years do you think Cricket's been talking about changing your health and by changing your diet and your uh, and doing exercise and things like that? Uh, Cricket's interest has been as long as I, before I knew her. Yeah, I, I think for a young woman. You, um, she's you yeah. interested in been, vegetarianism and yeah. things. So I want to say, did you hear that? High school? Um, not much longer after yeah. that. Yeah. Like yeah, mid twenties probably. Yeah. I yeah got more interested. She's in she's and she's she's not as old as I am. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I um, raw food. I got into in like 98 mm -hmm. is when I went to Creative Health Institute. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I went a little bit earlier than that, but uh, see, it took me a little bit longer to get it. 
<laughs> so uh, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to go back several times and found it just <laughs> wasn't going to be good. <laughs> well, we're coming up on 45 minutes here. So do okay. we have any last things we want to yeah. wrap up? Anything else do you want? You can, you can do something about your symptoms and you can do something about your life. And there's yeah. nobody that can't do something. So um, I think what Melody has given us like a real key here yeah. to uh, being in charge of our own thoughts and making sure that they change. And, and we held her captive in her incoming phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will call you later then, okay? So we'll okay. talk with you later. Thanks for calling at the right time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye. you. That was a really nice addition to I love it. Yes. <laughs> Can I read what it says about attitude? Yeah. yeah. This is really interesting. <clears throat> when we worry, we spark a chemical reaction in the body, wow. creating excess free radical activity within our cells. The same thing results when we eat poorly or don't get enough exercise. The result is a general decline in health, i.e. worrying yourself sick. Isn't that interesting? Oh, wow. Yeah. Those become actions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's right. I mean, between eating, sleeping good, drinking well, speaking real truth and praying and thoughts, those are all. It all feeds into the health. Exercise right. like fatigue. Strengthening and nourishing the heart strengthens bones, improves circulation, boosts red blood cells, and increases the amount of oxygen in your blood. A sedentary lifestyle can result in numerous different physical problems. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know people now who are having mm. to have surgeries for all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of exercise and death. They don't take care of themselves. They yeah. just didn't eat, eat themselves to death too. Just like oh, we're in your Well, life. we hope some of, more of you can join us um, in person next month for the great food. Um, I didn't show you guys all the food, but we had a couple great um, cabbage salads. <laughs> huh? You do no it again. If you like. Yeah. <laughs> Young. <laughs> They'll help encourage people to show up, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we could uh, put a few of those uh, recipes together and send them along? Do you think we could? I, I've got a copy of mine there. I, I think we could probably get some. Yeah, we could and, attach them. And uh, <laughs> they're on the website. Oh, okay. she says she's <laughs> mine are. <laughs> she, she did. We should just report what she made tonight. Because yeah. then <laughs> it looks so beautiful. I'll just put the links on the, I brought paper copies for people here. So, all right, everyone, have a great evening. Um, if I could find this one thing really fast, let me see if I can. Facebook, let me look and see if I can find it real fast here. Thank you for having a Zoom live tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's really amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. well, Where'd you get these books at? Yeah, no, at uh, Hallelujah Acres. I mean, how, uh, go uh, look up the email that they have in here. Oh, just okay. Here's, oh. here's two different things. Okay. Yeah, thanks. You might have seen this already. How old do you think that lady is? Uh, 60s? She's probably 75. Early 70s. She's 62. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I want to go a little older. But I don't know. Yeah, somebody guessed. Um, wow. Okay, wow. Somebody guessed. Um, 72 i said i hope she's not 72 because i'm going to be 70 this month and um uh, so okay here's the other one same age oh my God. different choices oh my goodness wow 
Oh my goodness, is right. Same ages. Yeah. Dang. Oh. He's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a something special to share with all of you that okay. changed changed me a little bit, my lifestyle. I I went to visit my my mom and her little dog Annie needs to go out on regular walks and stuff. And so while we were hanging out at her apartment for a few weeks, not only did I eat, start um, removing all the sugar and all the alcohol out of my diet, completely everything, including meat. So I rested a lot and then I walked the dog. But when I came back up north, I started walking for an hour and a half, doing the breathing exercises, Saying the positive affirmations, praying out loud, sending love to everybody, plus eating my raw stuff, and I'm sleeping so much better from doing all the variety of things. And I'm so thankful yeah. for the raw food groups that you put together, Cricket, because it's just been amazing. The Thank transformation you. Yeah. that we've had. Wonderful. That's awesome. Well, can I also say that um, one thing I wanted to say also is that my brother sees cricket only every few years, not very often. And he, he goes, that cricket is the only person I know that looks younger year after year. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> I can be just like cricket when I grow up. I know it. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks for joining, Deborah. You gave us a little extra people for the recording. So, <laughs> no problem. I'm here to serve. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, have a blessed night. Love you, you too. Love you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Bye.